Welcome to Nina in the Kitchen, where today I am honoring a request from Sybil. Hi, Sybil. Um, the request was for a bolognese sauce. And what that is, is a very special pasta sauce. It's from the city of Bologna, Italy. So let's just jump right into this. I'm putting some extra virgin olive oil into a pan that's over a low medium heat. And I'm adding butter. Then I have one small onion cut into a small dice, one medium sized celery stock, and that's the same thing. Everything is going into a small dice here. And the reason for that is because you want your vegetables to be about the same size that the meat is going to end up being. This is a small dice on a carrot, and um, I'll post the a video for how to get these small dices, but if you don't want to do this and you have a food processor, you can just chop this in your food processor, but when you do that, just be very careful. Just pulse it and look at it and pulse it and look at it because you don't want to pulverize these vegetables. You just want them small. And what we want to do here is to sweat these vegetables. And like when we sweat, they get warm, they exude a little moisture, and then they become fragrant. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want to brown these. This is going to take about six minutes. They've been in there for just a few moments. I'm adding, this is two ounces of pancetta, which I have also cut into a small dice. And that is 68 grams. I'm going to put a little salt in here because my, my butter is not salted. The hands-on time for a bolognese sauce is only about 30 minutes or so. It really doesn't take long to put together, but then you want it to simmer and it becomes this beautiful complex flavor. And what's unique about the bolognese is that unlike other sauces that are tomato based with meat in them, the bolognese is a meat sauce with a little bit of tomato in it. So very interesting, really delicious and rich. This will take about six minutes on this low medium heat and then we'll go to the next step. As you can see, these vegetables are what is called translucent, but that just means they've softened up. The pancetta is on its way to cooking, but nothing is brown. So this is exactly what we want. And that took about six minutes. Now the next phase of this, and if you think of it, um, bolognese goes in three steps. First, you get your vegetables done, sweated. The next thing you do is you bump your heat up, brown the meat, and the third part of this, and, and browning the meat actually toughens it up. So the third part of this is adding liquid, and that becomes your sauce. So I'm going to bump the heat up to medium. And what I have is one pound of beef, that's ground beef. That should be about 80-20, which means um, it's got 20% fat, 80% lean meat, and this is ground pork shoulder. This is now on a medium heat, and with these vegetables in here, that will help break this down. But you know, another good tool to use is a potato masher, just to help you break it up in the beginning. I'm going to season this meat with a little bit of salt. And now let's talk about the liquid factor. I'm putting three liquids in here. I'm using a white wine, dry white wine. You can use a dry red wine as well. The choice is yours. I think white keeps this whole thing a little sweeter because another component is milk or cream or, or a light cream. And this is one cup of milk that will go into this beef. Beef, as it cooks down like this, is dehydrating as it browns. And so to keep it from getting tough, you want to put some milk in there. If you're using milk, use whole milk because you do want that fat to help protect your meat. So we have the milk, we have the wine, and the other thing that's going in is tomatoes. Here are your choices for tomato, fresh tomatoes. Yeah, it doesn't really work. They're little, they're too delicate in flavor. A lot of people use tomato paste, and I've tried that, but that's kind of flat. It's sort of one note. 
So the best tomatoes to use, and it gives you some liquid in case you need more liquid, the best tomatoes to use are canned whole tomatoes. I never buy diced tomato when I'm doing a pasta sauce or a pizza. And the reason is, even though it's a canned product, um, a whole tomato in a can has much more flavor than a chopped tomato in a can. And all that I'm going to do is just tear this up. Just make sure that you have some pieces just like that, as if you were buying torn tomato or diced tomato. As this starts to brown, I'm going to start adding milk. And the technique here is interesting in that, um, like a risotto, you don't put your liquid in right away all at once. Let it get absorbed and then you add a little more and so on. I'm going to turn the heat up as this happens because you do want this liquid to evaporate somewhat. And what's going to happen with the milk is right now, I'll do it again so you can see. You pour it in, so you have milk. But what happens to it eventually, look at that, it's like magic, right? What happens to it is that it becomes sort of this clear liquid and that is all of the fat out of the milk, out of the, um, the butter and so on. This is not a diet dish. However, later on when we build the sauce, you will be able to skim some of the fat off of it if you want. That's the last installment of the milk. When you add wine to, directly to the meat, um, it can taste a little boozy. Whereas if you add the milk first, it kind of sweetens it up. And that's why I'm using white wine because it's lighter. And now this, this meat has a little sweetness to it. So this is one cup, 250 mils of a dry white wine. And same thing, you just sort of add it. You don't just dump it in there. You have to kind of go slowly and introduce everyone around. <laughs> Because this is going to simmer a long time, I'm adding some bay leaves, just two small bays that should be fine. And, you know, I just realized I don't have a slotted spoon. <laughs> so of all the equipment that I have and don't have, how weird, anyway. So this is the can of tomatoes, which I've torn up and I'm taking them out. I'm taking the solids out of this. I may end up using this tomato juice in here depending on how this cooks down. Now, at this point, everything is cooked, but it just needs to all come together. The flavors need to just go low and slow, and the, the complexities of, of these flavors just has to get together and come out. So anytime you're using milk, a, a nutmeg is a great flavor to add. And all that you do is just a couple, just a couple of grates. Nutmeg is a very important taste in here, but it's not something that you want to be able to identify. You don't want anyone to sit at the table and say, mm, that nutmeg is, is in there. Um, so I'm going to keep this on a low heat, stir it about every 20 minutes. I have some tomato sauce waiting to go in in case this liquid boils down too much. Keep a lid off to let this evaporate. Keep an eye on it. Give it three, maybe four hours. Taste as you go. This is just about the simmer that you want. It's just barely bubbling. And that is perfect. Well, this is ready and it is, it looks so different from when you first saw it. But now it's cooked down and that is just a beautiful bolognese. Now to finish the dish, whenever you finish a dish like this, when it's a rich dish, whatever fat that you used in the beginning is what you should finish it with. So because it's bologna, I'm going with butter. I did skim some fat off of the surface. I've been tasting this as I go. And um, that little scraping of nutmeg really perfumes this without being overwhelming. It's really a delicious sauce. So that's it. There's the bolognese sauce. To serve it, one cheese and one cheese only, 
Parmigiano-Reggiano. This cheese is made for this sauce. They go hand in glove. And that's it for me. So, Sybil, thank you so much for the request. I really enjoyed making this for you. I hope you try it. Please let me know if you do. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.